Hey guys, Scott back again um, with you for the new beer dissection video. What I have today, again, I've been doing, uh, if I didn't announce it officially in one of the videos, I had a friend uh, kind enough to bring me about a six pack, a sorted uh, pack from uh, the Bend, Oregon area, Pacific Northwest, for those of you who are not good with geography. Um, so I've been doing a few beers from that region. Um, the one I have today, and I it's called Crooks IPA, or I don't know if the X is silent. Okay, um, it's an every they advertise as an everyday IPA, a West Coast inspired IPA brewed with Galaxy Mosaic, Comet, and Whole Flower CTZ hops. Slightly juicy, dank, and downright delicious. Okay, um, it's like the other couple of beers I've reviewed from that region. Um, I wouldn't <laughs> disagree. Um, it's at coming in at 5.8% alcohol and about 50 IBU. So, you know, it's sitting right around that West Coast IPA number. So that's why I'm not surprised to uh, see that. So it's from the, the Crux Fermentation Project, I believe is the name of the brewery. Um, again, I don't know if the X is silent. So if I'm mispronouncing it and you know, please chime in below. Um, and I think that was the main uh, distinguishing information. Very pretty looking can though. Okay, kind of uh, more like a Southwest kind of uh, look to it. And I'll probably have it pop it over my shoulder. But West Coast IPA, like I said, I think I gave you the major specs on it as far as 5.8% at 50 IBUs. Okay, Pacific Northwest. So like most of mine, to get my good old Tulip oversized snifter glass, and let's crack this bad boy open and take a look at it. Okay. All right. So it's definitely pouring like either American Pale Ale or uh, West Coast IPA, no doubt. Um, nice, dense, um, about a half an inch of, of head there. Um, you know, that, that light to medium gold color, pretty clear, um, you know, pretty standard for West Coast IPA. You know, we aren't looking for New England IPA haziness or even American IPA haziness. Um, and again, I usually pour a little more aggressively than this, but nice amount of head, but very pretty looking beer. Okay, so let's take a sniff of the aroma. Oh, okay. So, there's a nice light piney, um, maybe subtle resiny type of smell to it, aroma to it. Lightly fruity, um, fruit kind of being more like a like a peach, um, overripe mango, things like that. Not pineapple. Not getting any really any citrus from it, but again, a little more piney, slightly resiny, definitely fruit, and without no doubt. I mean, there's, like I said, the peach, it's maybe some other type of stone fruit you have in there. Okay, so cheers to you guys. Let's take a, a little. Drink of the aroma. Oh, I should mention too, you know, you just kind of get that that typical graham cracker kind of malt. Um, I don't know the grist, so I don't know if they're using any crystal malt, white bread, but you know, the, the hops are dominating a little bit more, at least on the nose. Oh, it's interesting. It's more like floral on the um, on the palate here, um, or herbal. Um, can't quite put a, a, something on it right now. Um, but yeah, definitely medium carbonation, medium mouthfeel. Um, drinks a little drier than I expected it to um, be. Um, maybe like a, a kind of a grape, kind of white grape type of, of flavor. That, I think I get a little bit of that peach, but kind of moderate pronounced bitterness, but that kind of fades away pretty quickly. Um, 
Again, I'm left with that floral kind of aftertaste too. Um, it's very nice. Um, you know, it's so anything that sounds like criticism, it isn't. This is actually drinking quite nicely. Um, drinks pretty dry too. I, I'm not getting a lot of residual sweetness on the back end of it, which I was expecting. Um, you know, not that 5.8% is that high, but sometimes I get a little bit of extra resi residual sweetness, which I'm not getting here. Um, I could see where they get some of the dankness, um, which you get from that resiny. Um, sometimes they say resiny is kind of like marijuana-like, um, but there definitely is that subtle fruitiness on there. Um, but again, the graham cracker type of malt uh, profile, white bread, um, light toast um, to it. Kind of drinks a little bit more like a Sierra Nevada Pale Ale as far as the, um, the balance between the bitterness and the, and the malt and the hop uh, bitterness. Some more like a American Pale Ale. Um, just trying to get a little retro nasal um, activity here on my palate, also in the nose. Um, but yeah, cracker, kind of a dank, overripe peach type of uh, flavor I'm getting on it too. Um, little. A little spruce or, or like a, a, a minty kind of uh, a flavor I get on it also. Very subtle, but very nice. I mean, it's definitely I can see, you know, this, you know, drinking, you know, you can have more than one of these and, and not feel like you're, you're kind of overpowered with, with a slap in the face of all these high-powered New England IPAs and stuff like this. But I would say... Good rendition here of a West Coast IPA or even American Pale Ale, because I think I'm getting a little bit more of the American Pale Ale than West Coast IPA. And why I say that is I don't get as much of that little bit darker, toasty, caramel kind of crystal malt usage on those West Coast IPAs that I usually have a little more often. Um, but... You know, on the aftertaste, maybe a, a slight citrus, um, maybe like a subtle grapefruit, but again, nothing like your New England IPAs. Um, you know, I would pair this with, you know, since it's not overly bitter and overly hopped, I'd go with most fish, um, even salmon, I would have no problem with this. Um, even though sometimes with IPAs and salmon, you can kind of get a metallic taste, but I don't think you'd get that with this. Um, you know, um, shrimp dishes, mussels, marinara. Um, I would have no problem drinking this with a lot of Italian fare, uh, certain red sauces and things like that. A lot of times we don't talk a lot about Italian food with some of these beers. Um, but I think it has enough bitterness and carbonation to kind of cut through most things. Um, again, I think it's a good everyday uh Pale Ale slash West Coast IPA, um, if you happen to have this. Now, I got this directly from, again, a friend that was out on the Pacific Northwest and brought me an assorted six-pack six with a, a few other beers. Um, so I'm sure if you're on the Pacific Northwest, if you can get this in six and 12 packs, I could see this being an everyday beer that you have with dinner and um, just hanging out with your buddies and things like that on the deck. Uh, because uh, it's really not like slapping you in the face with too much heavy malt and or heavy, you know, hop character with that. But just enough to kind of give you, um, you know, you're on a, in the IPA world. Um, but again, you get a little of that spruce, slight fruitiness that you still think you know you are in that, that Pacific Northwest type of hop uh, region. Um, so anyway, guys, you know, I would, again, another, another winner here. I would, you know, B plus A minus easily, if not A beer. Um, but again, I'm, I'm sorry if I'm mispronouncing it, but the fermentation product of the Crooks, or you know, if the X is silent, I apologize. Um, fermentation project, I probably have it spinning over my shoulder here sometime by the time I get this produced. And uh, again, very good beer, guys. 
All right, till the next video, have a great day.